Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is our 42nd uh, town hall session since uh, the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in March. Uh, we uh, obviously have been coming uh, to you live on, on multiple occasions. Uh, tonight is both a Facebook Live and telephone town hall. So uh, if you're watching on Facebook and you have a question, please write it in the comment section below the live stream. If you're on our telephone call tonight, we're calling uh, some 100,000 households across Dutchess County. Uh, and if you uh, join us this evening and you're on the telephone, please dial zero. Uh, you'll be asked to uh, record a question and then you'll be brought live to ask that question. So dial zero if you have a question. Tonight is, uh, um, uh, tonight's focus, or the focus of tonight's town hall, uh, is as much an update on uh, our uh, COVID uh, response as it is uh, the release of the 2021 budget. Uh, under the uh, county charter and the administrative code, I'm responsible uh, for presenting uh, a proposed budget uh, by November 1st of the year for the county legislature and the community to consider. Uh, I did so today at 11 a.m. today. Uh, the county uh, we prepared and pr uh, presented to the county legislature and to to our neighbors a uh, budget for 2021. I, I think it goes without saying uh, that uh, well, this this county could not have entered into this pandemic any stronger financially, uh, but the challenges uh, fiscally have never been greater. Uh, we face a significant loss in sales tax revenue, which represents about 40% of Dutchess County's revenue stream. Uh, at the same time, uh, as we all know, massive economic uh, uh, slowdown and closure, the loss of businesses and jobs, uh, certainly the human toll that's affected so many families. I know it uh, full well. Uh, and at the same time, uh, massive increases in costs for the response to the pandemic, which is our job, uh, but also a demand for services uh, that county governments are responsible for, all has compounded uh, our fiscal challenge. Uh, adding to that is uh, still the federal government has not come together. Uh, Republicans and Democrats, uh, the legislative branch, House, Senate, and, and White House have not come together on, on any federal uh, relief package for uh, counties uh, across America. Uh, and the state government continues to withhold revenue to county governments and threaten significant cuts. Uh, so the challenges have never been greater. Uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, as we talk a little bit about tonight, uh, tonight about our budget, um, it really speaks to uh, the, uh, the responsibility of preparing for the storm. That these last eight years, perhaps unknowingly but responsibly, uh, this county administration, our budget team, our finance team, county legislators, elected officials, county employees, all worked uh, really to prepare for a storm, and uh, we are in the midst of it. And uh, thankfully, that preparation has uh, buffered us and uh, enabled us to provide a budget uh, and present a budget uh, that focuses on core responsibilities, that meets the expectation that I think you have as residents and voters and taxpayers, uh, but also uh, is responsible uh, and, uh, and affordable. So let me talk a little bit about that. Again, if you're following us uh, on Facebook, uh, please write a question in the comments section uh, below the live stream. We are calling uh, thousands of your neighbors across Dutchess County. Uh, this is County Executive Mark Molinaro. Thank you for joining our telephone town hall this evening. Uh, this is our 42nd town hall uh, session since the uh, beginning of the COVID-19 uh, response. Uh, this is also our annual budget town hall. So if you're on the telephone with us this evening and you have a question, dial zero. Uh, you'll be asked to record that question and then you'll be brought live to ask that question. So again, uh, let's talk a little bit about the 2021 budget. Here are the basics. Uh, we uh, began this, uh, this budget process knowing that we would have to shrink the size, scale, and scope of county government. Uh, so this budget reduces uh, the size of, of county government and cuts spending by some 3.5%, 3.6%. That's about $18 million in, uh, in, in cost savings in the 2021 budget, less than what we're, we're expecting to spend in 2020. Additionally, we're shrinking the size of the county workforce, some 150 positions less. However, um, uh, no layoffs. We were able to achieve that through uh, voluntary furloughs among employees this year uh, and an early retirement uh, separation incentive that we engaged in earlier this year uh, that allowed us to shrink the size of the county workforce uh, with no layoffs. And importantly, we are not increasing taxes. In fact, this budget provides a modest, very modest property tax levy decrease 
uh, and a, um, uh, a reduction in the county's tax rate. Uh, those things all add up uh, to what we, uh, we believe is a responsible and prudent budget. Uh, this represents for us the seventh consecutive year that we've been able to provide a tax levy reduction. Again, I am not going to mislead you in a, in a, for a second. This is a very modest reduction in the tax levy, uh, but it is uh, it is not uh, any increase. We would not shift any new burden to property taxpayers or taxpayers this year. Uh, this budget also includes no increase in, uh, in in other taxes or fees and provides a reduction in the county's uh, tax rate. And so we are uh, both uh, producing uh, a smaller budget that results in a slightly less, uh, a slightly smaller tax levy, uh, and a tax rate reduction. This budget provides a 3.6 percent cut in spending, uh, 2021 to what we expect to spend in 2020. That's some 18 million dollars, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that tonight. So if you have a question, uh, dial zero uh, on your phone. We'll get you into the queue. If you uh, have a question on Facebook, just to add it uh, in the comment section below the live stream. Now, remember the county uh, budget or county property taxes are a small portion of what you pay in property taxes. We recognize that. Uh, the county property taxes uh, represent about 11% of your total tax bill. So, I, you know, I recognize that it is not the largest portion, but for the amount that we're responsible for, that which we have jurisdiction over, we want to obviously be responsible uh, with, uh, with your tax dollars. Now, uh, as I said, uh, uh, preparing a budget has never been more challenging than it was this year. Uh, but there are goals in this budget, and there are priorities in this community, and we are focused on addressing those. Um, first and foremost, uh, we continue to expand our efforts to address affordable housing and homelessness. Uh, this budget includes uh, moving forward with a one-stop uh, center to assist uh, individuals with evictions and rent and ho housing stab uh, stabilization. Uh, we're working with our partners to coordinate support for emergency shelter and uh, uh, short-term housing. Uh, we'll continue with some $2 million in commitment uh, to assist both county resources and, and some uh, state, state uh, 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 federal aid uh, to assist uh, with homelessness. So we'll continue our emergency shelter. While there were other communities closing shelters during the pandemic, we expanded ours and provide uh, mental health and telemedicine services along with uh, uh, support for those living uh, in, in a homeless uh, situation. We continue this budget to support that. Uh, we're also going to uh, reduce our reliance on costly motels and hotels for housing, which will not only provide greater stable, uh, stability for individuals, but, but reduce cost. Uh, and then lastly, uh, within the area of housing, we're going to continue to work uh, to grow affordability. Uh, we recognize in particular with the onslaught of uh, pressure from, uh, from New York City uh, that housing costs will continue to rise, and it's going to be incumbent upon towns, villages, and cities, and all of us, developers and otherwise, to really engage in providing affordable housing options. Additionally, we recognize that 2020 and certainly uh, the weeks and months and years ahead uh, likely will never have been more challenging uh, for, for young people uh, than they are today. Uh, so by focusing uh, our commitment on our path to promise, we will continue to support uh, services for young people, notably a 40% increase in our Path to Promise initiatives uh, to support uh, local partners in providing assistance to young people across Dutchess County. Uh, we'll continue uh, to support, uh, well, we'll be supporting a youth advocate program to help individuals, young people who might be in the uh, in the criminal justice or juvenile justice system or those who, who are uh, in need of greater support. This will enable us to connect them with services, hopefully to assist them to keep them independent and less, less dependent and, and out of uh, the juvenile uh, justice system. Uh, we're including $150,000 plus significant federal aid to expand uh, support of daycare, uh, supporting the Day One initiative to create higher quality daycare opportunities for young people, in particular, uh, a, uh, an expansion of our grant program uh, to provide assistance scholarships to uh, families that are in need of daycare during this, uh, these most challenging times. Uh, and I would note uh, that we in our capital plan remain committed to as much as a $25 million uh, partnership with the city of Poughkeepsie and a collabor collaboration of local uh, service providers to build a youth opportunity center here uh, in the city where we can organize and centralize Dutchess County's youth services under one roof and be much more effective and uh, really create a state-of-the-art facility to assist young people and families into the future. Now we recognize that this year has been one of great upheaval and uh, certainly 
Uh, there have been moments this last year where we've been reminded to look inward and to take real stock of who we are as a society and recognize that not all people have access uh, to equal protection of the law or equal opportunity. Uh, so we've been engaged in an effort to provide support for those living with mental wellness concerns, substance, uh, 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 substance use disorder. Uh, and this budget uh, uh, expands uh, the reach of, uh, uh, of the work that we do to provide uh, support for uh, for law enforcement and community safety and recognizing that everyone needs to be uh, protected equally. So uh, thanks to the work of the Sheriff's Office, uh, working in partnership with local law enforcement agencies, police chiefs, community activists and stakeholders and community leaders across Dutchess County, uh, we've assembled a, a series of, of, of reforms that we're focused on. Uh, this capital project a budget includes a commitment to body cameras for Dutchess County deputy sheriffs. Uh, that provides for their benefit and the benefit of the community. They'll be manda mandated by the sheriff for use and, and purchased by the county government. Uh, we're working with uh, local uh, uh, employers, the, the, the police agencies themselves, and our own human rights division, human resources department to expand the candidate pool to make it easier and, uh, and uh, hopefully to attain greater diversity in the pool of candidates to, uh, for, for police and law enforcement hiring. Uh, we're also rolling out in partnership with uh, our uh, crisis intervention training, and I'll mention that in a moment, uh, procedural justice and implicit bias training. Uh, this training has been uh, evidence-based. Uh, law enforcement agencies uh, 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 enjoy it and appreciate it, uh, and Dutchess County will support uh, implicit bias and procedural justice training to every police agency in the county. Now, that'll go hand-in-hand -hand with our mental health and crisis intervention training. Uh, Dutchess County is the first and only county in America to require every officer on the ground to achieve uh, crisis intervention uh, training. That's de-escalation and uh, support for those living with uh, mental wellness and mental, il uh, mental health concerns. And uh, law enforcement and police officers have recognized this and, and have said it's among the best uh, p pieces of education and training they've ever received. All of this is meant to focus effectively on the priorities in our community uh, and, uh, uh, and the goals within this budget, but also recognize that we have a lot of healing uh, to do and uh, that we've got a lot of work together uh, as a community. And frankly, we are always at our best when we are working uh, together. So um, those are the priorities within the budget. If you have questions, add them to the comment section below the live stream or dial zero. This is County Executive Mark Molinero. We're talking a little bit about uh, our, our COVID-19 response and the 2021 uh, proposed budget. Uh, we have a couple questions. Um, Lee uh, Caruso is asking, are property taxes going down? Lee, yes, they are. Uh, the county's, this 2021 budget provides a modest tax levy, very modest tax levy production, reduction, uh, but it is a, it is a reduction in, in tax levy and uh, a reduction uh, in the property tax rate. Uh, 2020, uh, we were able to present the largest tax levy cut in 20 years. Uh, for 2021, this will be the seventh consecutive tax levy reduction uh, and the sixth reduction in the county's tax rate. Uh, so assuming you didn't receive any increase in your assessed valuation, you'll likely uh, see a modest decrease in your county tax bill. And again, it's different depending on town assessments, et cetera, but yes. Um, uh, Judy, are police departments going to have staff reductions? Well, uh, we're only responsible for one, uh, and in coordination with the sheriff's office, there's no reduction in the total size of the county's road patrol or the sheriff's office per se. However, there will be reassignments. There are school resource officers that might not be in schools. Uh, there are fewer inmates in the county jail facility, which requires fewer uh, corrections officers. Again, through vacancies, we've been able to reduce uh, the commitment there. Uh, but this is a continued commitment to law enforcement uh, and, and strengthening law enforcement in a responsible way, really uh, uh, improving upon what we do well uh, and addressing those areas that need to be addressed. And this, uh, this budget com continues that commitment in a way that, uh, that's responsible. And I'd, I'd offer to you that we are uh, we've been spending these last several months molding consensus among stakeholders, community activists, uh, police agencies, law enforcement, police officers, sheriff's office, working together to, uh, to address uh, uh, the issues of community uh, concern, public safety, uh, bias, and, and, uh, 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 and equal justice under the law. And uh, we're making great progress by molding consensus, and that's the focus uh, that we have uh, here in uh, the county. Megan, any information on Hedgewood outbreak? Yes, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, and um, Tom, please discuss county payments for the new county jail in terms of present and future budgets. I will do both of those things. Let's start with uh, the county uh, jail. We're moving forward uh, with the replacement 
uh, of the current county jail facility. Um, that has been that was decided some years ago. Uh, that uh, our plan and budget, uh, although uh, 2021 uh, isn't impacted all that much by that effort. Uh, because the current Dutchess County Jail is the least efficient in the state of New York and uh, quite frankly a deplorable uh, cancer on the county's criminal justice system, uh, we're going to demolish it and replace, uh, replace it with a facility that provides the uh, support and resources necessary uh, to assist those uh, in our custody and care. Uh, because the county's uh, uh, jail s structure today is, is the least efficient, uh, we are very, very staff heavy. In fact, 230 some odd corrections officers requirements for some 125 to 150 inmates on any given day. Uh, through attrition over the next several years, uh, we will shrink the size of the county's correction office work officers workforce. And in fact, even after assuming the debt service, the construction and the operation of the new transition center, uh, we will net four and a half million dollars in annualized savings. Uh, so the only way in fact to enhance the criminal justice system to provide for public safety, uh, to invest effectively in restorative justice among those who are in our custody while saving money uh, is to demolish the current facility. And that, uh, that is what we're moving forward with and will re result in uh, significant savings to county taxpayers and a much better and healthier system. Uh, so I appreciate that question. Megan, let's jump right to Hedgewood. I want to mention uh, the Hedgewood um, um, uh, 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 cluster, if you will, has, it, I'll say this as respectfully as possible, sort of run its course. Uh, there are no new cases of note. Uh, there are no new cases at Hedgewood. Um, uh, there are still several hospitalizations from individuals who uh, were at the Hedgewood uh, assisted living facility in, uh, in Beacon. Uh, thanks to uh, the response of the health department, uh, working in partnership with the management there uh, and the city of Beacon. Very grateful to Mayor Lee Kiriakou and others. Uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we obviously conducted a significant amount of testing. We worked to contain uh, the transmission, uh, and there are no, uh, no active cases at Hedgewood uh, today. So that, uh, that, has, um, uh, that has subsided, uh, but there are still some individuals who, uh, who are hospitalized, and sadly, as you know, uh, we did experience uh, several deaths. Uh, let's um, um, uh, remind you, if you're on the phone with us and you'd like to ask a question, dial zero. We're going to go to Keith in a second. So, Keith, get ready. We're going to ask you um, uh, about, uh, uh, or let you ask about veteran services. But uh, let's jump to COVID-19 numbers so we have those and you know what they are. I'm really going to work our uh, American Sign Language interpreters this evening. <laughs> We're friend, friend, friends. Friends? Friends. Friends. <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, a moment of, uh, of downtime. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about where we are with COVID-19. Uh, we have uh, conducted over 215,000 tests countywide. We continue a very uh, expansive uh, infrastructure for testing. Uh, we are monitoring 173 active cases, which is high, uh, and it is a, a note to be, uh, to be aware of. Um, but we are not, and we do not have any identified clusters or area of concern at the moment in Dutchess County. There are uh, at, at the colleges and in public schools uh, and in our assisted living facilities, no identified area of concern. This is what we expected, which was a, a, a modest and, and likely continued uptick in cases. Uh, they're not showing the same degree of severity. Hospitalizations have hovered at about 12, not between 9 and 12 these last several weeks. Uh, and um, uh, we continue to maintain in the region a positivity rate of, two, of one point, now 1.9 percent. Now, Dutchess County um, has uh, a positivity rate of nine-tenths of one percent. That's our average over the last several seven days. We actually have five-tenths of one percent yesterday. So that is that represents in both cases the lowest positivity rate in the region. It doesn't mean that uh, we won't have an uptick and it doesn't mean there won't be new cases. But what it does mean is generally speaking, people are being smart. I know that this has been a long 10 months and longer still for families who haven't seen loved ones or, or who have lost loved ones, longer for businesses that are struggling to stay open, uh, families that uh, have yet to recover uh, a lost job or, or, or income losses. Uh, I understand that. Believe me, we, we, we do, and we deeply care about that. At the same time, we need people to stay vigilant and be considerate of one another. Please continue to engage in that physical distancing. Uh, continue to engage in the kind of basic uh, um, cleanliness that would keep us from transmitting the disease. And wear, wear a mask. Small gaps. 
had some technical difficulty. Um, let's, if you have a question, write it in the comment section below the live stream. Uh, hopefully, uh, folks are joining us. Uh, and uh, if you have a question on the phone, dial zero. This is County Executive Mark Molinaro. You're joining us live at our 42nd town hall meeting since the beginning of COVID-19 uh, and our response. Uh, and this is also our annual uh, budget uh, uh, budget public uh, bu bu <laughs> budget telephone town hall meeting, uh, which of course we do uh, annually. Just as a reminder for those listening, this uh, as you know there there is an election going on. I won't uh, get into uh, who or how you should vote, uh, but I will tell you that uh, you uh, can participate in early voting. Uh, that is underway uh, already. Of course, the last day to vote early is uh, November the 1st. That is Sunday. Uh, there are five poll sites across Dutchess County. This is not unique to Dutchess. I know that many residents have the wait time. I will say this, and I and I mean no disrespect to anyone, recognizing there are those who, who can't physically wait. Believe me, in every one of the poll sites, if you have a physical uh, a disability or a challenge and, and, and can't wait in line as a senior or otherwise, uh, poll watchers and election inspectors are asked to advance you through the line, and generally speaking, there's no, no concern for that. Uh, but I will say this, I, I just voted, uh, waited online uh, almost an hour here in the city of Poughkeepsie. I, I think it's wonderful. I think it's heartwarming. I think it is uh, is overwhelmingly satisfying to see so many people engaging in their right to vote. And, and yes, um, you know, hopefully the state of New York, uh, which is responsible for uh, establishing the voting requirements in the state, uh, hopefully the state learns uh, some things from this exercise and accessible that uh, in uh, most important one upon which all others uh, are, uh, are are reliant uh, because we need government to protect the rest. So uh, that said, um, uh, um, please, uh, early voting is underway. You can vote in five locations in Dutchess County, uh, Fishkill Town Hall in the village of Fishkill, Millbrook Firehouse in the village of Board of Elections, and library in the town of Poughkeepsie. So uh, please exercise your right to vote. Uh, and please, if you can physically do it, if you, as long as you can, uh, otherwise, of course, only so many tomorrows left before Election Day, and you can vote at one of the poll sites across Dutchess County on Election Day, uh, Tuesday, November uh, the 3rd. Renee, when will DMV you need to uh, 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 you can you can go to the DMV by appointment. Uh, so uh, the Poughkeepsie DMV is open, the Wappinger DMV is open. And in both cases, that is by appointment. Please schedule such an appointment. And um, uh, and that said, um, uh, many of your transactions can occur online. Please consider uh, doing that as well. Jennifer, what will cuts to health department? Um, uh, we'll I'll. Most of it is 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 sort of um, uh, staff restructuring, but there is no reduction overall in commitment to services. Right, we're expanding uh, our uh, pa uh, pandemic response. We are expanding our mental health services. Um, uh, expanding mental uh, working with Mental Health Ameri America. We're expanding our stabilization uh, center reach uh, by working with our community partners. Uh, we are expanding our recovery coach commitment, uh, uh, medication-assisted treatment in our jail, substance use disorder assistance countywide. None of this uh, is being reduced. Uh, I think that what you will experience is more of an administrative restrict, you know, sort of reduction. We're very creative, uh, and what I'd offer to you is that um, uh, what everyone in this county government knows is I don't like people. So if we're going to reduce things and cut spending, it's going to be based on a way of being innovative in providing the service. So we're leaning on technology. We're partnering with uh, our service agencies. Uh, and yes, we're saving money, but we are not reducing our commitment uh, to those services. So all of that uh, is, uh, it, it remains. Uh, there will be positions, uh, but again, not in mental health uh, per se, not in a drug uh, and substance use uh, disorder treatment. Uh, all of that is being preserved in one fashion or another. Thank you uh, for that question. If you have a question on Facebook, uh, type it in. Uh, in the live stream, we're going to go to Jeff. Jeff's on the line regarding uh, the opioid epidemic. Go ahead, Jeff. Hi, County Executive. How are you? I'm fine, thank. How, how are you? Can't complain. Uh, so I've been reading a lot lately about how the uh, pandemic has exacerbated 
the impact of the opioid epidemic. I was wondering doing to help address this. Jeff, I have said that public health crisis of our lifetime. Uh, of course, uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, has, has eclipsed that as a public health concern uh, and an and, and emergency and crisis, and, and we recognize that. But, but substance use uh, disorder remains uh, a, a critical, critical need uh, to be addressed. So um, yes, we have seen increased uh, uh, overdose-related deaths. Uh, that is, uh, I will admit to you, compounded and New York State's uh, cashless bail uh, reforms. Uh, what has had occurred historically is in Dutchess, because of the expansion of drug uh, assistance programming and our uh, we were at the time of an arrest or the time of arraignment. Uh, so while, again, we don't want people in the criminal justice system at all, meaning I if someone does, uh, in this county up until this year, we were able to connect them if they had a drug uh, issue or substance use disorder, we could connect them with services. Well, New York State changed that, which means we're not making that initial connection, which, which means there are those who are struggling without assistance uh, in our community. That has compounded our, our challenge. That said, this particular budget does not give an inch uh, on this crisis. We are, we are laser focused on providing assistance because we know that every life has value and we want to provide that, that support and help people on their road. Partnering with our mobile intervention team, we're partnering with people in and the Regionalization Center. We'll talk more about that. Expansion of medicated assisted treatment in the county jail to help people in the, in the criminal justice system. Uh, our recovery coaches embedded in uh, on Main Street. We're actually expanding that capacity with recovery coaches. We're expanding Narcan training and support uh, for uh, uh, individuals uh, to assist in times of emergency. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, the other supports that we've uh, created uh, to assist uh, in in housing, in homelessness, and and so on. So uh, we are laser focused on this crisis uh, because lives lives matter. And in our case, uh, in this county, every life uh, we recognize every life has value, and those who struggle with substance use disorder need our help. And uh, we're going to continue engaging that to save. A question. If you have a question, dial zero on the phone. Uh, you're on with County Executive Mark Molinaro. We're going to go to Steph. Steph had a question, I think, uh, in a second regarding the YMCA. Steph, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I had a just a question. What the plan is for the YMCA, um, the demolition of the YMCA in Poughkeepsie? If you could explain that. Absolutely. Thank you for that question. And so. Um, this is part of the county's uh, youth services program, our, our Path to Promise initiative to really expand the reach of support for young people uh, and to bring um, a state-of-the-art facility to Dutchess County uh, with providers under one roof, working with county government and other, other government levels uh, to really engage in youth. Community Center, uh, we agree, uh, ought to be here uh, in the city of Poughkeepsie for the need, but also the, the, the logic of, of having it centralized with county government services. Uh, if the city council approves uh, adding the county of Dutchess as a co-owner of the property, uh, our intention is to work with Mass Design, a local uh, 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 architectural design uh, firm organization uh, with a lot of community engagement and a series of, of, of uh, uh, service providers locally uh, to demolish the existing building and build a youth opportunity center in its place. Uh, and uh, the county is uh, committing as much as $25 million to achieve that goal. Uh, with that, we'll centralize our services under one roof. Uh, we'll engage with collaborative uh, partners uh, in a way of, of providing direct service. Uh, and we're going to use this project if, it, if it's allowed to move forward, uh, and it'll be dependent really on the city council and the, and the county legislature to approve. Uh, we're going to engage uh, local trades and, uh, uh, and employers to get young people in Dutchess and in the city of Poughkeepsie uh, trained to actually work on the project. So we believe through an apprenticeship program we can get young people lined up to actually build uh, this new youth opportunity center. We're going to rely on mass design and the great work uh, that uh, has been underway uh, with the Poughkeepsie uh, Youth Cabinet, uh, our Path to Promise, uh, and our partners in youth services. A couple other questions um, that I know we'd like to, um, uh, to, to try to get to. Um, I want to make sure that I've covered most of the things uh, uh, we generally uh, like to talk about. We have another bingo? We have another bingo. Let's jump to bingo.
I'm very excited about this. Uh, please join us at the Stanford Recreation Park in Stanfordville, New York. Uh, uh, thankful uh, Supervisor Wendy Burton and the town uh, officers there in Stanford wanted us to come out to, to Stanford. So on November the 5th, uh, we're hosting another drive-in bingo. Uh, it's They've been really successful and people have enjoyed another effort by the Office for the Aging to connect with seniors. You're welcome to join us there, uh, 1 p.m. Uh, and uh, uh, it's car-based and uh, if, uh, uh, if you're lucky, uh, you know, we'll be there. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's scheduled for November 5th at Stanford, uh, uh, Stanford uh, Recreation Park in the, uh, in the town of Stanfordville. Let's talk a little about Halloween. Uh, that is on Saturday. Um, you remember uh, um, we uh, uh, worked very hard to uh, make clear that we felt that uh, we could be safe this year. We're going to encourage you to be safe this year. Common sense, uh, basic common sense. If you're not feeling well, this isn't the year to go trick or treating. If you're not feeling well, this isn't the year uh, to uh, uh, to ne necessarily hand out candy. Um, <laughs> and either way, this is not the year to uh, to throw uh, eggs or shaving cream at anyone's house. Uh, please don't do that. Uh, and in fact, um, that is one thing we're going to be on the uh, on the on the lookout for. Uh, but if you're out uh, this year and you want to trick or treat, just be safe. Uh, small groups, stay local. Uh, and uh, and try to keep those groups, as I said, small. Engage in the physical distancing, what have you. Uh, but uh, be smart about it. Be considerate about it. Halloween mask is not a medical mask. Uh, think of creative ways maybe to get a, a nice mask, a medical mask, incorporated into your uh, your costume. Uh, but uh, that said, uh, uh, just be safe. Be considerate uh, and keep it small. Keep it local. And if you're not feeling well, uh, please uh, just uh, just take a pass this year. Uh, but we encourage you uh, to do that. And speaking of staying healthy, um, uh, obviously, because we're in the midst of uh, starting uh, the flu season, I'd encourage you, uh, if you choose, to get your flu shot. Uh, very important. Again, your choice, uh, but this would be the year to get it if you wanted to choose to do so, uh, so that we can slow the transmission of the traditional flu and, of course, distinguish the difference between the two. Uh, we're going to go to um, to Jason in one second. Jason had a question regarding Path to Promise. Uh, but Mary wanted to ask about um, active case count, so let's jump to that on Facebook. Currently speaking, uh, we are tracking 173 active cases. And again, uh, as I mentioned, we are going to see modest incremental growth. There might be a spike here or there. Uh, this is not alarming to us um, because when it's matched with the transmission rate and hospitalizations, we feel um, uh, confident that you all are doing the right things, but we are uh, aware uh, and we are uh, paying attention uh, to the slow and steady growth. No areas of concern, not a town or, or village that's of concern, and there's no cluster of concern, um, but there is modest incremental increases. Uh, we are at 173 active cases, 12 hospitalizations, 1.9% transmission rate in the region. Uh, we are at 9 tenths of, of 1% in Dutchess County, the lowest transmission rate of any county in the region. Again, that is that is by your efforts and by happenstance. So we're not. This is uh, this is leadership, science, uh, your commitment, and and just simply uh, the fact that that we just haven't seen any great change in transmission. It, it is possible that could occur. Uh, I don't want to overestimate or, or or undervalue uh, um, the possibility. So uh, be be aware of that. But that's where we are. As far as closing schools, uh, that is at uh, over uh, seven, uh, five, five percent, uh, five, no, ten, ten, ten. Okay, I'm being uh, whispered to. Um, uh, uh, in fact, schools could open if they were below five percent um, uh, transmission, but they would have to close if they're over nine percent transmission. So at the moment, we are at nine tenths of one percent. We are not seeing transmission concerns in public schools or private schools for that matter. There have been some cases, but not widespread transmission, not severity of cases, uh, and we are seeing a stabilization, relative stabilization of hospitalizations. Uh, so those are important. We're going to go to Jason. Jason had a question regarding the path to promise. Jason, are you there? Hey, yeah, thanks, Mark. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. You bet. Um, yeah, I was, I was curious if you could kind of explain that and tell me exactly what that path to promise, you know, for Dutchess County is that you're running. Uh, I haven't really heard of it, and uh, so just kind of interested in finding more out about it. Sure. So we launched this a few years ago. This is sort of the umbrella for our youth services effort, uh, the goal of evaluating what we do for young people and how we can do it better. Uh, and the Path to Promise has been led by our deputy, or excuse me, assistant commissioner for youth services, Carmen Smallwood. 
Uh, and uh, last year, we launched uh, this effort to collect the data and to, and to manage uh, that information. Now we're moving forward with an expansion of services. So this budget includes 140000 in small uh, project grants to assist in youth services, uh, partnering with agencies across Dutchess County to make an impact in the life of young people. Uh, we're working with the Artifact to launch a digital hub, a location for young people to identify job opportunities, training opportunities, and, and sort of interact with, with one another and connect with services and support. We're launching our own Path to Promise uh, resource website, which, which is really a clearinghouse of all of those youth services, similar to our thinkdifferently.net website, where you're able to get under one roof uh, all of those resources available, in this case, to young people. We're also piloting uh, a, a program called Ready 4K. It's literacy development. This is an effort uh, to support uh, young people uh, and families uh, with use of technology to expand uh, support for literacy. Understanding that young people are on the computer a lot more today and, and a lot more with handheld devices at a necessity and resources that will help advance uh, uh, literacy and support them. $150,000 for programming assistance uh, through our Day One initiative, uh, working in partnership with Day One uh, to create uh, higher quality daycare opportunities, along with, as I mentioned, a continued expansion of the daycare uh, scholarship program uh, that uh, we're making available to families who might be in need of daycare. Uh, and as I mentioned, a $150,000 commitment to the uh, Youth Ad Advocate Program, which uh, works to prevent, uh, uh, to assist young people uh, in the juvenile justice system, prevent placement in, in, in sort of institutional care, but rather keep them in, uh, in families, keep them in support services so that they're getting the help that they need. You know, uh, it, it, young people enter the criminal justice system or juvenile uh, justice system early on. It's traumatic. And quite frankly, it is, it is complicated to get back up on your feet. If we could through, through this effort, uh, prevent those, those types of things. We're going to make a valuable impact in the lives of young people. And as I said, this Youth Opportunity Center in the city of Poughkeepsie uh, will be a major advancement, in allowing us to, to really coordinate with a number of providers to really enhance the way we do uh, and provide services for young people across Dutchess County. On Facebook, um, two members of my house working. Any news on adding jobs in Dutchess? Susan, I, I feel for your family. I really do. This has been... Um, I, 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 I said this early on during the pandemic, um, I, I just cringe when people use the term essential businesses as if to suggest uh, that, uh, that, it, that someone's job isn't essential. I don't, it doesn't matter where you work, uh, every business is essential um, and every job is essential and, and I can't imagine how challenging it is to have so many uh, in a single household lose, lose their work and I'm sorry for that. We are seeing job growth. Uh, Dutchess County is is rebounding. Is rebounding. We we have seen a, a precipitous decline in unemployment. There continues to be federal uh, and state assistance for unemployment claims, which is useful. But we want jobs, and so there are employers who are growing in the county. Um, it's going to be slow and sluggish. Um, for some opportunities, visit Think Duchess. Think Duchess uh, uh, is our business alliance uh, through the Chamber of Commerce and others. We try to connect people with job opportunities, and there may be some out there. So please, uh, please do visit Think Duchess online, uh, thinkduchess.net, thinkduchess.com, thinkduchess.org. Um, I'll confirm that for you in a minute, uh, and we'll, we'll try to be some help. But I can tell you that we are seeing economic growth again. It's just going to be really, really sluggish and tough in the state of New York because of the restrictions and, of course, because of people's hesitance to sort of get back to uh, sort of ordinary living, and that's uh, going to take time. Uh, but uh, we're there with you, and if we can be of some help, uh, we will uh, we'll do that for you. It's thinkduchess.com, thinkduchess.com. Um, we want to go to um, uh, uh, some more questions. If you have a question online, um, please uh, add it in the live stream below the feed, uh, the comment below the live stream. Uh, we're going to go to Jim in a second. Jim had a question regarding firehouses, but before we do that, um, Tom had a question about news regarding the election process, um, just in general. Um, so I will, there are a lot of people voting, Tom. <laughs> there are a lot of people. America is breathing. Uh, democracy is working. And uh, there are a lot of people voting. And I, and I don't mean that to be um, um, uh, dismissive in any way. Uh, uh, this, this is is a brilliant exercise of, uh, of, of the American process, and, and uh, there are folks lined up, as you likely know, uh, all across America to vote. In Duchess, uh, there are, uh, uh, so we are, in, this is Wednesday, so Thursday and Friday, 
uh, daytime, uh, um, uh, uh, early voting until 8 p.m., I think. Can we uh, just confirm the, the time slots for me? Um, I'll confirm those. I think it's noon. A Thursday is 8 p.m. Uh, so we'll confirm that, but five locations. You know, it's going relatively well, although people are obviously concerned they have to wait. To that point, uh, Gina, uh, is it Gina Lee, uh, asked a question regarding early voting. Do I really think people should be voting in these long lines? What about seniors? Well, first, I think people should be voting. Uh, and I do think that uh, your constitutional right uh, to exercise that uh, is, is, is principle and important, and doing it safely is important. The Board of Elections across New York is making priority for seniors and those with disabilities. So if you are waiting online, please alert a poll watcher or an inspector. They want to accommodate uh, you by advancing you through the line. And I'll tell those others who might be waiting otherwise, we're going to be polite, we're going to be kind, and we're going to be considerate to allow those who need uh, that assistance to jump ahead and, and, and get through the poll, the, the, uh, the, those lines. But there's only so many ways you can vote in America, and sometimes this, this, is, how, this is what it looks like. Uh, in order to have early voting, you can't have thousands upon thousands or hundreds upon hundreds of poll sites open because there isn't the technology to support it. You can't go from one election district to another uh, and, and re run the risk of, uh, uh, of, of voting uh, you know, uh, in, in multiple locations. So this is the way the state of New York does it. Hopefully, they're going to learn some lessons and get better at it. Uh, but uh, just as a note, uh, Thursday, 12 to 8 p.m., polls are open. Thursday, 12 to 8 p.m. On Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And on Sunday, noon to 5 p.m., early voting, five locations. Fishkill Town Hall, Rhinebeck Town Hall, Millbrook Firehouse, Duchess, Board of Elections in Poughkeepsie, and the Boardman Road Branch Library. We're going to go to one more question on the telephone. Uh, we're getting close to the end here. Uh, the uh, telephone, we're going to Jim. Jim, you had a question regarding firehouses? Hi, Mark. Go ahead. How can are you, you hear me? I can hear you li loud and clear. Okay. I, I spoke about this in any results. I want to see a consolidation of firehouses in Dutchess County at a county level. I, I look at the number of firehouses and fire trucks in a five-mile radius, say, from Oh, from town of Poughkeepsie down to Wappingers and, and out to LaGrange. A lot of fire trucks, and, and it would seem to me we'd get a lot more volunteers if we had some structure and some direction, and, and town of Poughkeepsie is totally out of control with what they're char charging the fire tax. People here are on fixed incomes. We had a good volunteer organization, and it got destroyed because they brought all paid firemen in and and, and the volunteers got all the dirty work, and uh, as a result, our taxes are going through the roof. No question that, so, uh, that those districts have highest fire taxes in the country, uh, and certainly in the state. The issue with consolidation of, um, of fire departments, fire districts, governments, county, just walk in, do is support a uh, actually did departments that did consolidate either build um, but the large governments separate and apart from county government so the only way to affect those is either through change uh, provide resources to try to minimize the cost and those you recognize the the fire tax is exceedingly exceedingly high now it's important that we we get the service and we want the service and i've got nothing but respect for career and volunteer firefighters and emergency responders today is national emergency response first responders day by the way i uh, recognize those men and women in, uh, who do sacrifice and service for us but you are correct uh this is something that does exist at both the state and local level we just don't have any jurisdiction or authority uh to 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 engage in it so what we have done is work to assist in, in, in ambulance service. Uh, our uh, emergency uh, uh, response plan uh, has, has actually provided some relief in municipalities for ambulance service and paramedic and EMT service, uh, and will continue to support uh, sharing of services among fire departments. Uh, and where they want to move forward with consolidation, we support it. It's just they have to take that initiative, uh, and they, they get to function independent uh, of, uh, of state and local governments. Uh, they are, in fact, governments unto themselves. Uh, we're going to stay live on Facebook for a little while longer since we had a bit of a gap. Uh, if you're on the phone with us, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have called some 
hundreds of thousands. No, uh, we've called actually every household in Dutchess County. Thank you for joining us on the telephone this evening. It's County Executive Mark Molinaro. Uh, we're going to sign off on the telephone in just a minute. We'll do a couple more questions on Facebook if there are any. Um, uh, Craig had asked about procedural justice training. It speaks to the process. This is, uh, I asked you to Google it. In fact, we're going to have a little bit of a video that kind of explains uh, what procedural uh, justice is. Uh, but the goal here, and, and police agencies across America have uh, have been engaging in it. The city of Poughkeepsie actually has been offering it to police agencies here uh, already. The county is going to support uh, that. Uh, police chiefs want it. Uh, it's a way of ensuring that no matter who the officer comes into contact with, there isn't any association with the, the individual's race, color, or creed. It is simply about interacting with that individual and that interaction, meaning, you know, it doesn't matter what color, it doesn't matter uh, what creed, it just uh, 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 establishes a very, very strong you know, formal procedure, which is step one, step two, step three, that's it. And then within that, you know, this, this county already has, our police agencies have uh, use of force policies that uh, uh, govern uh, 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 the use of force uh, to, to, to de-escalate situations. So when you marry sort of a non-biased approach to every individual, uh, and again, this is, we all have some form of, 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 of prejudice to address ourselves, but when you marry a, a sort of, um, you know, uh, very logical, very procedure-oriented response to any incident with crisis intervention, de-escalation, uh, and the mental health training that we offer, police officers are given the tools that they need to be effective. Now, we're also going to marry our work uh, with uh, the support of our mental health team, embedding, in fact, the helpline, our 24-7 our helpline, in our emergency response uh, 911 dispatch center so that at the very least there's that integration in the delivery of service so that officers aren't sent off to uh, to a mental health concern without being aware of it uh, and uh, and have the support necessary and that we could dispatch uh, in the case of uh, mental health concerns through our helpline we do this every day the mobile intervention team when when it's not a criminal activity but rather uh, something that de demands uh, mental health support this is something that has been embraced by this county for eight years now we've been engaged in it uh, and law enforcement has benefited from it. Uh, they support it. Uh, and our community activists and stakeholders uh, see this as one area where there is consensus. And thankfully, we're moving forward um, with that. Uh, so I'm going to say goodbye to those of you on the phone. Uh, if you're on the phone call, we're going to ask you just to uh, 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 thank you for joining us this evening. If you're on Facebook Live, we'll go for a couple more questions. So thanks for joining us on the Telephone Town Hall. Uh, we look forward to your participation in the budget review process. That will go on for a little bit longer. Uh, so uh, 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 we'll keep you posted and join us next week on Facebook Live if you'd like uh, for more information. So sticking with Facebook, uh, we're going to uh, answer a few more questions. Angela, is your family trick-or-treating? Yes, Angela, my family is trick-or-treating. And when I say my family, what I mean is my children will be collecting candy, but I will be inspecting it before they can have any. Now, this is both for public health and physical health reasons. Uh, so uh, my kids are actually going to be out. I won't tell you what their uh, costumes are, uh, but I'm sure if you follow us on uh, Instagram or, or something, uh, Facebook or <laughs> Twitter, you might you might see them. Uh, but we are going trick-or-treating. We're going to stay local. Uh, we're going to go to houses that uh, we know, families that we generally interact with. Certainly don't want to uh, risk anybody. If we're not feeling well on Saturday, we won't be going out. But assuming we're all feeling well, uh, we're going to go out trick-or-treating, uh, get a little bit of candy, and uh, I'm going to uh, inspect all of it because it's important that I do that. <laughs> Any other questions? If you have a question on uh, Facebook, uh, please just add it to the comment section below the live stream. I'm uh, happy to get to a couple more, uh, but thank you uh, for joining us this evening. 42 town hall meetings since the beginning of March. Adrian, when will the new Y be built? Great question. So uh, we're finalizing a, an agreement with the city of Poughkeepsie which basically will establish, uh, uh, will request that the county uh, joins the city as co-owner of the property, establishes that mass design and this collaborative uh, uh, grouping of, of service providers will lead the development project, uh, and recognizes uh, the commitment of uh, the county of up to $25 million to move forward. Assuming that the city council and the county legislature approve that intermunicipal agreement, simple majority vote in both, both houses, council, county legislature. We hope that they'll uh, approve that this year. Uh, and uh, assuming they, they do, we can move forward, um, I would say, within the first quarter of next year with the demolition of the existing building. Uh, and by the third quarter of next year, we might be in a position to, um, uh, well, certainly by summer, we'll, we'll be able to green the space and make it usable. Uh, this is uh, likely an 18 to 24 month process from demolition to, uh, to development. 
Um, but there'll be some steps in between that the property will be use, useful and we'll be able to have some engaging activities on site in the meantime. So um, uh, that's the process. Uh, the shared services or the intermunicipal agreement uh, hopefully will be considered by the city council. Well, it's not finalized, so uh, they haven't seen it yet. Uh, neither have we, uh, but we're in the midst uh, of that uh, process. Once the city council approves the intermunicipal agreement, the Dutchess County Legislature has to approve the intermunicipal agreement. Uh, and then we'll move forward, and when funding is necessary, the county legislature will have to approve uh, bonding authority to allow that to happen, and I'll certainly be advocating for that. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, I appreciate you joining us this evening. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, coming out again. Be safe this Halloween. Uh, don't forget uh, to exercise your right to vote. Uh, very important. You can vote early, right up until Sunday, and then, of course, on Election Day. Uh, Tuesday, November 3rd. Polls are open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Tuesday, November 3rd. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, be safe, stay healthy, and be kind to each other.